bop, bop. Who's faster? Amanda Nunes. So, can Cyborg overwhelm her in the first round with her power? Yes, that very much can happen. Is that a good idea for her? No, I don't think it is. Uh, for two reasons. I think that Nunez is faster and has a very strong punch, especially right hand of her own, and she has this bad habit of drawing back. I think if they happen to be in the pocket with each other, if Cyborg goes crazy and gets in her face and doesn't keep her distance control, and she thinks she can just blast Nunez out of her, that might work. Or a coin flip, the faster of two right hands, the cleaner of two right hands, she might be drawing back, and just before her right hand lands, clack, she's going to get clack, cracked with a, a Nunez. I think Nunez can win by knockout in the first round. I also think that Nunez can mix things up for three and a half, three to three and a half minutes in each round, and then go for the takedown and take down Cyborg even with Cyborg being stronger. If Nunes can get one or two takedowns in the fight and land some vicious ground and pound, if she can land some good ground and pound, which she's more than capable of doing, then uh, that can change the complexity of the fight. Honestly, for Cyborg, I'd be looking to take this three, four, five rounds. I'd be looking to keep that distance and an outboxer don't run into the takedown. If she's too aggressive, she may get caught with her right hand that's faster. If she's too aggressive with the forward pressure and doesn't keep her distance, like she always used to do before her last few fights, she will get taken down more easily. If she plays the long game, I don't care if I knock you out in the third, the fourth, or the fifth. If she plays that game, I think she very well may be Nunes. But she's still got that crazy fire in her heart. And it's a Brazilian champion versus a Brazilian champion. And so if Nunes can also be aggressive in the first round, it might be crazy, and get in her face and hit her heart a couple times, the bravado may make Cyborg not fight the smartest fight. And if Cyborg doesn't fight the smartest fight, I give a very, very good chance to Amanda Nunes. Now, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I don't know what... Um, I don't know what the swing is going to be. I'm assuming that Cyborg is going to be uh, favored heavily. So if Amanda is a good size underdog, I'm not saying bet your house, but I might bet up to $100 to $1,000 on Amanda. I think people underestimate the fact that her right hand might land faster than Cyborg's right hand. If they get into a firefight, I think she has a, a more than a 50-50 chance, actually. Um, and I think that if she can get some takedowns, she has a good chance of winning the fight as well. People sleep on Amanda. Let's go back to guns, because that's the other thing I love. I think Taurus, the, the Brazilian firearms company Taurus, is missing out on a huge opportunity here. You have Brazilian champion versus Brazilian champion. This should be being promoted in Brazil, I assume. I would find something like, hey, at the press conference after, can we present the champion just like they do on the, all, you know, the tough finales? I would be presenting the champion with a 617 engraved, really nice, it's a seven-shot, small, revolver 357 magnum they have that looks pretty i would have a really nice engraved one stainless steel and their new g2s the g2c is a pretty decent gun for a budget if it actually works after 150 rounds or so the g2s i would be their new slim nine nine millimeter um subcompact if you will i would be giving those to the champion so taurus you, you should get hook these girls up because it'd be very good publicity for you in a brazilian champion versus brazilian champion fight either way you win whoever wins out you should be giving that to the winner. Okay. Um, I think that's about it, guys. That's about all the notes that I got. So I would bet on John Jones, and honestly, depending on what the ratio is, I, I wish I knew how much Amanda had been walking around at. Now, if she was only walking at 148, I think she'll get overpowered. If she ever got her weight up before the last five weeks to, like, 158, I give her a good chance it's to still have the power but have the speed advantage. Um, I'm really excited for that fight. And guys, I wasn't bagging on anyone. I'm giving their stats. I love to see John Jones, the greatest fighter of all time. Steroids or not, um, maybe outside Demetrius Johnson. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see him fight. I'd like to see him fight. I, I offered a coach. I would have coached him for this fight. I would have showed him my advanced MMA striking, neo striking system. I would have uh, not just random combos, but specific combos going to the next combos. It would have been so advanced. He would have he he would have smoked Alexander. We'll see if he does it. Is this still going to be a 50-50, 60-40 fight, or if we see 85-15 fight John Jones, or do we see Gustafson getting takedowns 
and slowing the action down and controlling it. Um, so I'm excited, guys, and uh, I don't know. Be careful if you're going to Inglewood. It's uh, it's not the best. I've been to that area before. I went and saw the first, uh, uh, I don't know, what was it, K1 Coliseum Brock Lesnar fight I went and saw there, whatever that event was. I don't remember. Sakuraba versus Hoist Gracie too. When Hoist suddenly must have been going to GNC himself. Um, guys, it is what it is. And uh, on the steroid thing, I've proposed for a long time. Look at my weight cutting recommendations. How to end extreme weight cutting. I've been around. I have really sound things. How to end extreme weight cutting. What weight classes should have been added. All this stuff. People ignore it for years. They're only concerned about that. Look at, um, on the steroids thing, cheap, simple, effective. Every athlete's tested at least 12 times per year, random testing, and then, of course, you have to be tested, uh, you know, maybe five weeks out from the fight and a week from the fight, always. But everyone's tested at least minimum 12 times your total testosterone. It's a $69 test. It's a cheap test. Test the total testosterone randomly at least 12 times, maybe 24 times, and, and, and randomly, so it's not just every month, but kind of here and there. And then always before the fight and after the fight, etc. and so forth. I don't care what steroid you're taking, it's going to raise your testosterone. Okay, um, just do that. Just do that. Just do that. Now, I don't think you should only be allowed to be, eight, maybe I'm wrong in this, whether top range is 847 or 1105 or whatever it is in the two main ranges that are used in America. Say 125% of normal humans since you're going through so much training and so many different things. So if top of range is 850, set the max at 1100. That's okay. Because VTOR, TRT VTOR was probably at 2,500, okay, total testosterone. So let's, let's set total testosterone 125% of normal human max level, 18-year-old. I'm okay with it. But should we allow some guys to be at 2,500 or 3,000 versus some guys at only 1,000 that are taping or off their roids? Because it's kind of like the Diaz brothers said, everybody's juicing people. Be real. No, because, yes, we're talking brain damage. This is a serious sport. This isn't tennis, you know. This is, ah, 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 other people that were probably doing stuff. This is, this is <laughs> freaking fighting. So when you see this, their shoulders like this, that's punching power. And punching power of the noggin is brain damage. And CT is going to be a major issue. I saw it long ago. I see it in people. I had been rocked myself. I had... I take like three years off sparring. Now I have my chin's totally back, but I had lost it for a little while. So just do total testosterone tests. Above and beyond that, I would say it's weird that not all these athletes are not testing positive for EPO and growth hormone. We've only seen, I think, growth hormone Crocop and uh, GRRP6 or whatever, Mendez, like a pro hormone that increases your growth hormone. We're not seeing these guys pop all that much for EPO and growth hormone. And I know that there's a lot more guys using EPO out there. So what's up with that, USADA? What's up? What's up with that? Anyway, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I babbled a lot, but I gave you some information, some breakdown. And uh, yeah, guys, check out my channel. You want everything grappling, catch wrestling, catch jitsu, combatives, uh, Russian martial arts, firearms, USPSA. Uh, I got it. Check out my site. Look at the playlist, guys, especially if grappling. You want actual hour playlists on each specific position instead of all guys learning, oh, man, I know more because I'm learning this random move here and there, these two-minute videos. That's bullshit. That doesn't teach you anything. Learn a set system that I've given you from the different positions. Anyway, peace out. Please thumbs up. Please like. Please subscribe. Please share. Thank you. Catch you on the flip side.